The service is beginning in one minute. Service begins in 30 seconds. Good morning and welcome to our time of worship this morning. We're so grateful that we're able to gather together in worship this morning. And I know that it would be so much better if we could just gather together face to face in worship. But that is just not possible at this moment. And so as we gather together today, we gather all around um, each other's homes and wherever you might be. It is our hope and our prayer this morning that you would experience the presence of God's love. Today we have an incredible theme that we focus around, and that is that no matter what we face in life, we are never knocked out. We listen to the words in the scripture that remind us today that we live and we move and we have our being in who Jesus is. And so wherever you are today, I'm going to ask that we prepare ourselves for worship as we ask God that we might worship him in spirit and in truth. So won't you join me as we pray? And so, Lord Jesus, as we come to worship this morning, we pray that no matter where we are, that we would have an experience of your presence. May we live and move, no matter how we are restricted, and have our being, no matter how difficult that might be, in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. King of love and grace, my guardian, all my hopes and fears are in your hands. I'm in your hands. Where you go, I'll go. Show me the way. Every step I take, be now my God, our 
great defender, strong in love, forever faithful. We are yours, and we will trust in you. You are God, a great defender, strong in love, forever faithful. We are yours, and we will trust in you.
that we were brought into a place where God is calling us to be brave. And so let us pray. Lord God, we pray that we would be brave and courageous, that we would stand in the midst of everything that we are confronting and know that we stand not in our own strength, not in our own ability, but in who you are in our lives. And so may we become brave in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, as we prepare ourselves for the service, now I just have a couple of things that I'd like to speak to you about. Please would you join us as a church on a journey from Ascension Day, which is already this coming Thursday. We'll be having a service in the morning and we'll be having a 7 p.m. service. And from Ascension Day, that means this Thursday, right up until Pentecost for 10 days, we're going to be having a dedicated prayer time and we'll be having 
dedicated services every night at 7 o'clock. We have an amazing prayer journal that we're going to have available for you this coming week where you can journey with us as we prepare ourselves for awakening in the presence of God's Holy Spirit from Ascension to Pentecost. Even though we find ourselves locked down in this pandemic, that doesn't mean that God is not going to move. And this is a brilliant time for us to focus in on the moving of God's Spirit. So won't you join us? This is an amazing resource that's been available through Thy Kingdom Come, which is an international resource used by Christians throughout the world. So won't you join me and Christians right over the world as we find and experience the kingdom of Jesus, the kingdom of God here on earth. I'm going to hand over now to Rebecca and Tloni, and they're going to lead us through what's happening in the life of Grace Point. Hello, Grace Point family. It is so good to be with you this morning. There's just a couple notices I want to run past you before we get started. Firstly, every single day, we have an 8 a.m. devotional that goes, across, goes out across all of our platforms, Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. And we'd love it if you'd join us. Secondly, Monday to Fridays at 4.30, we post our worship window where one of our worship leaders, one of our uh, team members gives a short snippet of a song and um, how it applies to you and them at that time. And then lastly, we have a mental health tip every single day across all of our platforms. So every day there's something for you. And I really want to encourage you to engage with that. And then on Tuesdays, we have our Hot Topics Bible Study. And that starts at 8 p.m. It doesn't mean that you should have watched Hot Topics the last Sunday. If you're just um, passionate or want to hear about things that are going on in the life of the broader church, just join us because uh, Thloni, myself, and Ilsa, uh, we speak in depth about things that we just find um, extremely interesting, and maybe you will too. I'm going to hand over to Tony now to give you the rest of the notices. Thank you, Rebecca. And so in keeping with the notices, on Wednesday, we're going to continue with Bible study over Zoom. We've got two Bible studies that are available for you to join. The first is a Bible study that is led by Gary, If My People. That will start from 7 p.m. and continue till 8 p.m. And the second one will be led by Jackie, Soul Time at 7 on Zoom from 7 p.m to 8 p.m., a great opportunity for you to get in-depth knowledge around the Bible. And in keeping with that, on Thursday, we're excited to announce that we will be celebrating Ascension Day. We've got two services to celebrate Ascension Day, one at 9 a.m. in the morning and the other at 7 p.m. Do join us. It's an exciting journey that continues all the way till Pentecost. And then on Saturday, we've got our support group, which will be happening over Zoom. And that is a support group that is aimed at helping you with mental strength so that you can better cope during this pandemic. We look forward to connecting with you. Do enjoy the service. We will hand over to Jackie. Please, would you connect with us? We know that this is really difficult, but we would love for you to connect with us. And if you'd like to get hold of myself or Samilo, won't you please email us at minister at gracepoint.co.za. And I'm so grateful to speak about Samilo today. He is doing so much better. He's at home. He's recovering at home. We praying for him. Everybody has sent incredible messages, and we have faith that he'll be with us soon. So won't you just please now continue to pray for him and pray for the connection and the life of the church during this time. I'm going to hand over now to Brigitte, who'll be leading us in the offering. Good morning, Grace Point family and online worshippers. I hope that you're all keeping well during these difficult and trying times. Whilst we navigate through this unfamiliar territory and uncertainty, there are some things that remain certain. That is the Lord we worship, our Christian faith and the Word. And I really encourage you all to spend time on all three of these aspects as it will provide guidance, it will also help get through the difficult situations that each one of you may be facing. I'm going to pray for the offering this morning. On the screen, you will see various channels that you can contribute through, should you wish to do so. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear Lord, we just give thanks, Lord, for your love and your grace, Lord. We know, Lord, that everything we have and everything we are comes from you, Lord. Lord, we just pray that during these difficult times, those that have the ability, Lord, to, to share and to bless others, Lord, 
that we do so with willing and open hearts, Lord. We give thanks for the tithes and offerings that we have received and are about to receive. I just pray, Lord, that they will be distributed to uplift, Lord, to guide and to help, Lord, those people, Lord, who are really feeling the consequences, Lord, of the COVID lockdown, Lord. I just pray, Lord, that your abundance, Lord, will come through, Lord, and bless each and every community member, Lord, and, and every member of Grace Point. Lord, I just pray that you will go with Gary as he delivers his sermon this morning. You will open our hearts to the message, Lord, and that you will just continue to bless all at Grace Point, Lord, during these times and the work that they are currently doing, Lord. And so, Lord, we lift up our offerings to you in the name of your precious Son, Jesus Christ. Today is all about a little boy who used what was in his hands to become part of one of the greatest miracles ever. So today we will help our boys and girls realize what's in their hands that can be used in a mighty way. After watching the exciting lesson, please don't forget to link to our website where you can download the age appropriate craft for today and our weekly Bible study. Also, parents, don't forget, every Wednesday we post a new Investigating God's Word with experiments that can be viewed anytime during the week. Lastly, please ensure that our kids don't miss out on all we have in store for them by ensuring that you join our social media platforms. Like it, follow it, share it with as many family and friends to ensure that we connect with as many children as possible in a real and creative way. Good morning Grace Point. At GAP this week we continue with our Fear to Faith series as we look at the lesson Fear to Action. We'd also like to invite you to join our WhatsApp groups so we can communicate with you and let you know what's happening at GAP. This week we launched our 60 seconds of scripture with Gap, which is a special voice note every day with just 60 seconds of scripture to inspire your kids before they continue with their day. All youth are invited to please join us for a time of worship. As we worship together, connect together, and today we'll be focusing on how do I adapt my plans to the new normal that we now live under. How do I make sure that I do not give up? How do I make sure that I continue to thrive given all the change that is happening around me? We hope to connect with you. See you just now. Good morning. 
good to be with you today in the middle of this pandemic that we're facing, a time of uncertainty, uh, a time of sometimes fear, uh, a time of loss, a time of insecurity. But today we meet together here uh, on this platform to hear from the Word of God, to be strengthened by God, and to seek God's face. Uh, so a very, very warm welcome from wherever you're watching this, uh, from whatever church you're from or not from, whatever denomination uh, today we meet here together under certainly different circumstances, but we are together. Uh, the scripture today uh, comes from 1 Peter, for, uh, the first letter of Peter, uh, chapter 3, and I'm reading from verse 13 through to verse 22. Who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good? But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear their threats. Do not be frightened. But in your hearts revere God. Revere Jesus Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reasons for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. It is better if it is God's will to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit. In that state, he went and made proclamation to the imprisoned spirits, to those who were disobedient long ago, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah while the ark was being built. In only a few people, 18 all were saved through water, and this water symbolizes baptism that now saves you also. Not the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a clear conscience toward God. It saves you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at God's right hand, with angels, authorities, and powers in submission to him. I want to pick up my message to you today from the first couple of verses. Who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good? Who is eager? Who is going to harm you? Because even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear their threats. Do not be frightened. The theme of my message today is that we will not be intimidated. Now, right now, it feels that there are so many things going on around us. And when I speak to people, there seems to be this fear of, of intimidation of whatever form. I know right now, certainly uh, for us as a church in that, just generally the church is in a space in that where, where we are hearing more and more that, um, that we'll only be able to meet again uh, when we, I think <laughs> we've been pretty much put on the same level as taverns. Um, and pubs and, and, and that uh, the church seems to be on level zero when we'll be able to meet again. And we don't know when that is going to happen. But also there's a sense of intimidation by what's happening in the finances, what's happening politically, uh, what's happening around job security, food security. And, and, and right now, um, my message to you and to everyone watching this is for us not to be intimidated by that which is going on around us in the outside world. We have been given a, a great responsibility and a great privilege of being in relationship with God, in a personal relationship with God, who's messaged throughout the ages as those who are followers of God, never to be intimidated. I don't know for you right now what's going on in your life or what it is that's, that seems to be intimidating you. What is the thing that is causing you to fear or to worry? What is the thing that has put you on the back foot of your own confidence in Christ? or just generally your own confidence. I don't know where you act with that. But this is a message today to say we will not be intimidated. Now when you read the scriptures from the Old Testament to the end of the, of the New Testament in the, in the book of Revelation, time and time again the theme of, of those trying to intimidate the people of God always come off second best. And so today what I want to do is I want to pick up just three characters in the Old Testament in fact uh, that were that were clearly uh, trying, uh, were clearly on the other end, on the wrong end of being intimidated. But the, the story tells us how, because of who God was in their life, and because where they put God in their life, they were not intimidated in the least. And so today, my message to you is one of hope. Uh, for me, the the message is one of faith, uh, one of trust, and one 
of remembering who God is, who this God is that you worship. And so I'm going to be picking up three characters. The first I want to pick up um, is a very well-known story of David and David fighting against Goliath. And so you'll remember the Philistines were, um, were, were up against the Israelites and the, there was a, one of the Philist, Philistines uh, called Goliath was really mocking the Israelites and, they were, and he was going, man, uh, bring anyone up against me. I'm going to take you out. And he was basically slandering God and was slandering the Israelites, you know. And David, the one day who was a shepherd and he'd been looking after sheep and all the rest of it, um, came along to bring food to his brothers when he stands and he hears this Philistine standing in front of the army of Israel, basically, basically blaspheming against God, intimidating the people of Israel and intimidating all the soldiers. And he was laughing at them. He was, he was uh, humiliating them. And he must have been quite an intimidating figure because there was not one soldier in the whole of the Israeli army that was prepared to stand up against Goliath, even though he was uh, blaspheming against God and he was mocking the Israelites. And so David initially goes and he comes to his brothers and he hears and he says to everyone, he goes like, what's going on here? How can we allow, who's going who's gonna to sort this guy out? How can we allow him to, to blaspheme against God? How can you allow him to intimidate like this? Is there no one here to fight him, to take him out? Uh, and initially his brothers actually got quite angry with him and they said to him, listen here man, bro, are you seriously, all you do is look after the sheep, you're just like a shepherd and that, don't come and tell us, we, you know, we're soldiers man, you know, we've been in the army for a while, so please, you know. And David says it's, it's, it, it's unacceptable that we get intimidated uh, by this one who's wanting to, thre who's threatening us, who wants to kill us and, uh, and all the rest of it. Eventually, um, his brothers keep on saying to him, listen man, you've got to stop this, you can't, you know, who are you? You're just a shepherd and all the rest of it. And, and David says to them, listen here, understand this, that when I was out feeding uh, the sheep and that and protecting the sheep, I came up against lions and bears. So don't say to me, I'm just a, 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 she a lowly shepherd boy. And let me tell you something. I'm not, I've never been intimidated. I'm not, I was not intimidated by lions and bears. And he basically says to, the, to his brothers and to the other soldiers, listen here, I will not be intimidated uh, by, this, by the enemy. I will not be intimidated, intimidated by Goliath. I will not be intimidated against anyone who comes up against the God of Israel. And he says, just by the way, I wasn't intimidated by lions and bears either. And I took them out myself. Like as a sh lowly shepherd boy, I took out those lions and bears. I fought against them and I've killed them. So I will not be intimidated by this Philistine. I will come up against him. And so if you, if you read it in, in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 7, uh, ch chapter 17, um, eventually the king agrees, Saul agrees, um, and he says, um, eventually he allows David to go, um, to go, and so, so you'll know that Saul dresses David up in his own tunic and gives him all these weapons and all the rest of it, and he says, because man, if you're going to come up and you want to defeat, um, you want to defeat this, the enemy um, and not be intimidated, well, maybe if you put on some of my armor, I'm in the king's armor, and so Saul gives him these worldly things to to fight against being intimidated uh, by, by the Philistine. Uh, and, and David says, no, man, I, I can't use this stuff and that. I'm not used to them. I, they don't fit prop, properly and all the rest of it. So he takes a staff in his hand and says, you choose five smooth stones from the stream, puts them in his pouch, a shepherd's bag, and with his sling in his hand, he approaches the Philistine. So here you see, so the, the people of Israel are being intimidated by the enemy. There's a worldly way of dealing with it, according to Saul, the king. So he gives him armor, gives him a sword, gives him everything else in that that you think. And what he's trying to do is he's trying to somehow thinking that if David then arrives in front of the Philistine, at least with the king's armor on and with the shield and all the rest of it, that he's trying to fight um, the Philistine, the intimidation that he's receiving from Goliath. He's coming with worldly stuff to try and intimidate the, the giant back again. But David's going to say, I don't need that. And, and all he does then is then he takes his sling uh, and a couple of stones and all the rest of it. It's amazing because it doesn't stop there. So when the Philistine sees uh, David, now he's got a shield bearer and everything like this. When he sees David, he says this to David, um, am I a dog that you come to at me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. Come here, he said, and I will give your flesh to the birds and the wild animals. And then David says to him, this is the, this is the, the faith and the strength that, that we can fight intimidation. 
David says to the Philistine, you come against me with a sword and a spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hands, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. This very day I will give your carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. Now clearly, we've read this story so many times, you know, that, that maybe it doesn't make an impact. But I want you just to imagine the giant Philistine, he's got a shield bearer, he's got everything he needs. I mean, you don't get more intimidated than that moment. And yet comes this little shepherd boy, and he's uh, going, the same. it doesn't matter how, how much you try and intimidate me. It doesn't matter how much you try and scare me. It doesn't matter how much. Now, I'm, let me tell you something. Do I think that David somewhere in his like, own humanity was going, oh my word, what am I up against? But he was so filled with faith in that moment and that, and he came up against the Philistine, and he didn't defeat the Philistine, and he didn't deal with the Philistines with Goliath's intimidation, with worldly things, but he came simply dressed as a shepherd boy, as himself, but he came in the name of God Almighty. Now, what, what do we learn from this? We learn from this that, that part of dealing with, it, with, with being intimidated is that we remember times in our past when, when God was with us. So David says, listen here, when I was a shepherd uh, and I came up against lions and bears, God was with me. And just as he was with me then, he will be with me now. Uh, I, was, I was going for, um, for a run the other day. And one of my, uh, as I was running, one of my friends came past me uh, and he was mountain biking. And, um, and he stopped next to me and we were just chatting. But to be honest with you, it was a welcome relief because I really needed a break. And as we were chatting that, he was just saying that some things in terms of work for him have really gone south and not much coming in. And he's really hitting quite a hard patch, a hard time at the moment. Um, I said to him, you know, I've never known you as a stressor or even now as we're talking that. I mean, things don't look good for you at all at the moment. And he said, you know, Gary, when I look back on the past, that this is not the first time I've got, yes, the pandemic is different and, and what's happening around us is different. But as I look back on my past, I know that every time I went through a hard time, every time I went through a time of difficulty, God was there. And so right now, as I come up against uh, you know, worries about tomorrow as I come up against things that I don't know what's going to happen and an and uncertain future, I've realized there's no point in me being intimidated what's, by what's happening around me, by anything, by the world markets, by the, it's no use being intimidated because, uh, and I'm not going to be intimidated because I remember God in the past, how he delivered me from incredibly difficult situations. And so there's no point in me stressing and being anxious and fretting about it right now because I'm reminded of times in the past when God was with me. And so remember this, friends, when we're in moments of being intimidated by evil, being intimidated by things going on around us, look back to the past just as David did when he, when he, used, when he had to fight the lions and the bears. And he remembered that God was with him there. And so he had the faith and the trust in God not to to be afraid, not to be intimidated, to stand before this massive giant of a man called Goliath, armed to the teeth. He was not intimidated because he knew just that God, as God had delivered him from the past, so God will deliver him in that moment. The second person uh, that, that teaches us about, about uh, not being intimidated um, is Daniel. Um, so Daniel was part of the, the tribes of Israel that had been taken into, um, into exile. Uh, by King Nebuchadnezzar. Now, for 70 years, the people of, of Israel were, were in exile and they were under King Nebuchadnezzar's rule. He was really quite um, a hectic king in that he was, he was a real dictator. Um, and so even although he used the, some of the, 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 Israeli, the Israelites to do some of his work in that for him, um, he really was one of those kings that was just quite fearsome. Um, and so they had attacked the, the, the Israelites, taken them into exile, imprisoned a lot of them, killed many of them, and it, and it was a bit of a, a disaster. And so it tells us in Daniel chapter 3 uh, that King Nebuchadnezzar makes an image of gold, and it tells us how high it was and this massive big thing, and he sends it up, he sets it out on this massive big plain in the province of Babylon. He then calls all the leaders, the governors, the advisors, the treasurers, the judge, the magistrates, and all other provincial officials, and, and they dedicate this image um, that he had set up. And so all of them, 
and all the officials and all the government officials assemble for it and they stand before they stand before this this uh, massive big idol that they set up and they bow to it then the herald loudly loudly proclaims and says this nations and peoples of every language this is what you are commanded to do as soon as you hear the sound of the horn flute zither lyre lyre harp pipe and all kinds of music you must all fall down and worship the image of, the, of gold that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Whoever does not fall down and worship will immediately be thrown into a blazing furnace. And so then, as it would happen from then, every now and again, they, they would hear, people would hear the sound of the horn, the flute, the zither, the lyre, the, the harp, and all kinds of music. And then all the nations, because there was a whole mixed bag, bags of nations and all languages, fell down and worshipped the image of gold that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. But of course, there were some people, you always get the snitches, don't you, the impimpies. And so they come to King Nebuchadnezzar and they denounce some of the, the Israelites. They say, King Nebuchadnezzar, may the king live forever. Your, maj your majesty has issued this decree that everyone must fall down and worship the image of gold and all the rest of it. And whoever doesn't fall down and worship will be thrown into a blazing service. Then he goes into a blazing furnace. Then, then he goes and says, there are some Jews who have set over, you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who pay no attention to you, your majesty. They neither serve your gods nor worship the image of gold that you have set up. Furious with rage, it says. I mean, could you imagine just for a moment King Nebuchadnezzar losing the plot completely? He starts freaking out. I mean, people, who are these, these Jews that have now just basically gone and disregarded his command? I mean, he's the king after all. So he freaks out completely. The men are dragged before King Nebuchadnezzar and he says to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the image of gold that I have set up? Now when you hear the sound of the horn flute, the zither, the lair, the harp, the pipe, all kinds of mu music, then you have to fall down and worship the image of my, I have made. And that will be very good. But if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace. Then what God will be able to rescue you from my hand now i don't know about you but that's a pretty intimidating uh, moment in that to be standing before the king uh, uh, of the one who has attacked your your nation who has destroyed your nation has taken you into exile you're living under his authority and basically your whole life is dependent on the decision of this king he can destroy you in a moment and so you're standing before this king he's as furious as anything he's spitting snakes he just, he, he almost like in that moment says to him, listen, just, clearly you must have not been around when I gave this order. So listen to me. Let me tell you this again. When the music plays, you bow down to this God. And if you don't, just a reminder, I'm going to throw you into this firing furnace. So don't forget that. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, in the midst of this intimidation, says to the king, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, then God will be able to deliver us from it. And he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. Now that's one thing to be defiant. So number one is that they don't even bow down when the king says they need to bow down. Secondly, they defiantly say to him, listen here man, we will not be able to, we will not serve your gods. We will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold that you have said that they are defiant in that moment. And they say to him, and by the way, we don't even have to defend ourselves. We're not even going to waste our time defending ourselves because the God who we worship will deliver us from your hand. And so we will not. But then the real kicker comes in. So they say this, and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. And then they're saying, but even if he does not, how's this for a step of faith? Even if he does not, we want you to know your majesty that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. They are so steadfast in the face of intimidation uh, by the king, by evil, by worshiping another idol, that they end up saying to them, listen here, man, we are prepared to die. And by the way, our God's not going to deliver, deliver us. But uh, he will deliver us. But even if he doesn't, we still won't worship your idols. Again, he's furious with them and, he, and his whole attitude towards them changed. He orders the furnace heated up seven times hotter as usual. He commands some of the strongest soldiers in his army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and they throw them into the blazing furnace. And there they are in this fire. The, the Bible tells us it was so hot it even burnt a whole lot of the other soldiers that were standing around watching. 
Then, they re- then, of course, King Nebuchadnezzar leaps to his feet in amazement and says, were there not three men that were tied up and threw in the fire? They replied, certainly, your majesty. Then King Nebuchadnezzar says, look, I see four men walking around the fire, unbound and unharmed, and the fourth looks like a son of God. Nebuchadnezzar approaches the opening of the blazing furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out here. So aren't you amazed at how his, how his whole attitude changes again? Then he goes on, the king says in that moment, from being an intimidating king, he turns around and says that, that they, um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were sent an angel and, res- and rescued the servants that God was with them. They trusted him and defied the king's command and were willing to give up their lives rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. Then the king says, Therefore I decree that the people of any nation or language who says anything against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, or Abednego will be cut into pieces and their houses be turned into piles of rubble, for no other god can save this way. And then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Do you notice how Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were not intimidated, not by a fiery mad, crazed king who was so furious, but they weren't even intimidated by death in that moment. And in that glorious moment that they stand in the midst of the fire, what do they see? That God is with them. So when we, when we read the story of David, we are not intimidated. Why? Because we think back on our past and we remember how God has helped us before to fight the lions and bears that we faced in our life. We will not be intimidated because we know even now if we stand in the midst of the fire, God is with us. And so we will not be intimidated. We know that God will turn whatever fiery furnace you and I are facing right now, that he will turn it. He won't just, he doesn't just deliver us from the fiery furnace, but he also promotes us. You notice even for David ultimately becomes king, for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they get this promotion. And so God doesn't just deliver us from this moment. He actually promotes us in some form or fashion, whatever that may may mean to you or to me right now. So we will not be intimidated. Why? Because like David, we look back and we remember how God helped us fight the bears and the lions and that helped us, helps us to fight whatever it is that we are fighting right now so that we will not be intimidated. We think back. We receive, according to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, we will not be intimidated because just like God sends someone to protect him in the fire, that God will be with us not only in the past, but also in the present right now, whether you and I see it or not. I can tell you now that God is with you in the midst of whatever fire you are facing. And it doesn't matter how hot that fire gets. It doesn't matter how much they turn it up. Even like King Nebuchadnezzar turned them to make, told them to make it seven times um, hotter than before. In the presence of the furnace, in the presence of the fire, we will not be intimidated by anything going on around us because God is with us even in our fire. And then lastly, the story of Deborah. Deborah was a judge in, in, um, in, in actually written in, in Judges uh, chapter 4. And, and Deborah, um, speak, they speak about how Deborah was a judge, how she led Israel at the time. And um, Israel had messed up big time. Um, the king was dead. Uh, Debbie, uh, Deborah took. I'm saying Debbie because my sister's name is Debbie. Deborah. Uh, so Deborah uh, uh, sold them. Uh, so they were sold into the hands of the Jabin, uh, Jabin the king of Canaan, uh, and for basically for 20 years. Just imagine that for a moment. 20 years, the people of Israel were completely destroyed uh, by the Canaanites. Deborah, who was a prophet and also she was leading Israel at the time. Um, she held court, what they call, under the palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel. And people would come to her for advice and for judgment uh, over matters. But she was the leader of Israel. So then, in a moment, at one day when she's underneath this palm tree, she has a word from God. Uh, the, and, and so she calls Barak, who was the, the leader of the armies of Israel, and she says this to him. The Lord God of Israel commands you, go take with you 10,000 men, of Nathali and Zebulun, and lead them up to Mount Tabor. I will lead Sisera, the commander of Jabin's army, with his chariots and his troops to the Kishon River and give him into your hands. So this is the word from God, that God gives Deborah, the leader of Israel at the time, the judge, and says to her to, to tell Barak that he must take his army against the Canaanites. Um, Barak said to her, if you go with me, uh, I will go, but if you don't go with me, I won't go. Then certainly I will go with you, said Deborah, because, but because 
uh, of the reason you, that, that you are taking, the honor will not be yours, but the Lord will deliver Sisera into the hands of a woman. So Deborah went with Barak, and there Barak summoned all of them, and 10,000 men went up under his command. Now this is the really important part. This is the really important part. It's, it's, she, says, it's, she says to Barak, listen to this, God goes before you. And so in part of what she's saying to Barak, so she gets this word from God, she calls Barak and she says, listen here, okay, even although we've been intimidated and we've been defeated for 20 years, even although we have, we have done whatever we've had to do in that for 20 years we've suffered uh, under the enemy, we have been completely intimidated for 20 solid years. We have been raped and pillaged and uh, attacked and killed and it's been a disaster for 20 years. Can you imagine that for 20 years? So then one day she suddenly calls Barak and says to Barak, listen here, you need to summon some But this is the key. The key she says to him is, because God has gone before you. God goes before us. And so because God goes before us, he will give us victory and we will win the battle. And if you carry on reading Deborah, uh, so the judges, the end of that chapter, you'll find indeed that God delivers the Israelites from the Canaanites with an incredible, incredible victory. And, 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 and Deborah, in the face of the intimidation of being, uh, uh, being attacked and, and, and everything from the armies around them for 20 years, the key to what she says is she says, God will go before you. God has gone before you, she tells Barak. And Barak hears that. And so not only that, with Deborah leading them into battle, he is sure of victory. That is all he needs. And so just a reminder then as I begin to wrap up when, when we speak about that we will not be intimidated. We remember this. We remember we will not be intimidated. Why? Because God was with us, is, was with us in our past. He delivered us from the lions and the bears and he prepares us to fight the Goliaths in our lives. We will not be intimidated because God is present with us even right now in the midst of the fiery furnace. Right now, God is with us. God is present. And so we will not be intimidated. Why? Because God is on our side and he comforts us and he cares for us and he protects us and he delivers us from the fiery furnace. We will not be intimidated because God goes before us. No matter what you are facing right now, no matter what fears, worries, or anxieties that you are facing Right now in your life, remember this, that God goes before you. He's preparing a way for you. And I know right now it might feel, oh, my word, it's been like 20 years of attack. It's been 20 years. It's been, it feels like it's been forever. It feels like, I don't know, I'm, I'm so lost right now. I've got no idea of my future. I've got no idea of what's going on. And, and, but I'm asking you today to please put your trust in God. And even although it seems like a mess, even it feels like forever you've been intimidated, even though it feels like forever you've been under the cosh, you've been under the, it feels like you're being hit with a big stick or it feels like the clouds around you are just so dark and there is no way you're in the middle of the storm, there is no sunrise, there's no sun, there's no calming of the seas. What you need to know right now, like just like Deborah said to Barak, God goes before you. I'm asking you please to put your faith in God and to trust God and know that he is going before you. Do not be intimidated by what is happening around you right now. Do not be intimidated by what is going on in the world right now. Keep your faith in God. Keep trusting God. Keep looking at God because He's been with you in your past. He's with you now and He goes ahead of you. He goes ahead of you. The Lord prepares a table for me. God is preparing a table for you even in the presence of your enemies, even in the presence of intimidation, even in the presence of worry and fear, God is preparing a table for you. Church, we will not be intimidated. Amen. My hope is built Jesus' blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame But wholly trust in Jesus' name Christ alone Cornerstone Weak man 
Friends, thank you so much for being here today. I want to close off with a prayer. But I also want to give you an opportunity today if you feel um, overcome right now by anything that, that uh, the world is throwing at you. Uh, I believe and we believe without any doubt that it starts in that with a, a relationship with Jesus Christ. Uh, and if you feel that you have maybe strayed from God or you have never been in a relationship with God and you want to begin a journey of faith, I'm going to, I'm going to ask you to pray a prayer. Uh, and maybe just repeat this prayer after me. And uh, in that way, invite Jesus Christ into your life and begin to follow Christ, to accept Christ's forgiveness of your sins, His love for you, and His mercy. We live in grace. And so let's pray this prayer together, the salvation prayer. And I invite you to pray it after me as I pray it. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my life. to be my Lord and Savior. I believe you died for my sins and rose victorious over death. I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. I turn from my sin today only to follow Jesus Christ all the days of my life. I give you all my pain, all of my hurts, all of my fears, and all of my infirmities. Today, I receive total and complete healing in my life because of the shed blood of Jesus Christ. From this day forward, I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. Amen. Friends, thank you for watching today. I look forward to seeing you next week Sunday. Keep safe, keep at home, and accept God's love for you, God's grace for you, and God's mercy over your life. Amen. Thank you so much as Gary led us in this time of worship. And so won't you just continue to seek God's presence at this time, knowing that no matter what you face, nothing is impossible for God. So let's pray together.
And so, Lord Jesus, we thank you that we've been able to worship. We thank you, God, that in new ways we are able to connect. And we pray, Lord, that as we wait expectantly for the ascension service, Lord God, and as we wait hoping to see the move of your spirit, we pray, Lord God, that we would be a people that is ready, that in and through you we live and move and have our being. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen.